welcome back to the LNX Files. As always, this is a safe space for all things spooky. And today we're gonna use these tarot cards to do a what the what the check on Jennifer Garner, John Miller. This was a viewer requested video and thank God. Okay, so as I said, this was a viewer requested video and thank God, because it's a quiet week. It's been a quiet summer with celebrity gossip. We've got to be inventive, we've got to make suggestions, and I thought that this was a really, really great suggestion because we just did another video on Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner and like the specific dynamics of their relationship, the astrology, that they sort of have like a, a, a faded quality to them. Not that they'll always be together, but that she is in many ways the long-suffering wife. And that even after their divorce, she continued to kind of take care of him, almost like a, a surrogate parent. By the way, guys, watch to the end. I have a story about Mr. Peach from Beyond the Grave. So you definitely want to stick around for that. So yeah, I mean, some of you have brought up like, but you know, Jennifer Garner has these complications with Ben Affleck and would they ever get back together? But isn't she married to her long-term boyfriend, John Miller, who she met in 2018? And the answer is yes. And the answer can be like, yes, both. You can have complications with your ex-husband where things have unfinished business and you can still be so, you know, in love with your current boyfriend and want to build a life with them. Like those two things can exist with people at the same time. Like, you know, people are complicated. Human relationships are complex. We've seen this, you know, especially with celebrities, we've seen this over and over again, but also, you know, with our own lives and our, the drama, you know, in our own circles. So no one knows John Miller's sign of the Zodiac. I've scoured the internet for it. I haven't been able to find it. If you know it, put it in the comments, send me a link to where you found this. He doesn't seem to have an Instagram. She keeps their relationship off social media. She doesn't do like a happy birthday post for him. I haven't been able to find it. So really we're just going off of Jennifer. So again, to refresh, she's an Aries with a Cancer rising, Moon in Gemini, Stellium in Gemini, and Gemini is the ruler of her 12th house. It's the zodiac sign that governs that house, the house of, you know, loss, addiction, the subconscious, isolation, institutions. And the last video we did on Jennifer Garner, we were looking at the the planets and the aspects in her chart that suggested a great deal of hardship you know with long-term relationships which makes your comments even more significant which is like yeah but like what about her current relationship you know it's long term it seems easy simple uncomplicated with like a swell guy who's really tall because like jennifer garner isn't she like at least 5'10 she looks so tall and he towers over her i don't know where she keeps finding these really tall men but Send your rejects my way, Jennifer, please. Anyway, what was my point? <laughs> you can overcome things in your chart. So the chart will often show challenges that you have to deal with in like the first third or half of your life, but there's always the option of overcoming them. And that's essentially what she's done. Like her first marriage had, you know, the the malefic enclosure, which we talked about last week. So if you didn't uh, watch that video, take a look at it because it shows some like very concrete things that have linked her to Ben, things that have suggested that she would have a partner that would cheat, a partner that would um, have addiction issues, all sorts of other, other things. But again, we can overcome these things. Like for example, my astrology teacher once mentioned a woman um, who's fifth house ruler, the ruler of the house of pleasure, but also children, was in the eighth house, you know, the house of other people's money, death, taxes, but also death. And that this woman had five miscarriages. Now, what does that mean? Well, she was doomed to be childless. Wrong. No, she eventually overcame that. And now she apparently has like two or three kids. So sometimes again, you know, to hearken on this to harp on this point, these things that we experience in our lives are just meant to be um, obstacles that we triumph over later on. Okay, so I say kids, we just start pulling cards for these crazy kids. Um, I, You know, is John Miller like the love of her life? I think Ben Affleck was, and he broke her heart, and John Miller's a swell guy that gives her an uncomplicated relationship. Keep in mind, they were on again, off again. They met in 2018. Didn't they break up in 2020 because he wanted to get married right away? And she was like, no, I've been through so much with Ben Affleck. I need more time. Um, and then they're back on. 
Like, he may just be a nice, uncomplicated guy. That's how she's described him. She's like, I like how uncomplicated, I like how simple he is. I can see that after the this merry-go-round of drama that Ben Affleck creates wherever he goes. My lord. And you know what I also like about this channel is that literally no one defends Ben Affleck on this channel. Like, I don't recall seeing any comments where one of you is like, but Ben! Yeah, like, literally no one does that. Okay, so, all right, let's pull. Jen. John. Jen. John. Helping or hurting the situation. And where's the energy heading? So Jennifer's external vibe towards John. Okay, so at least... Uh, Outwardly, she's like, let's do it. Speed, completion, arriving at a goal, arriving at a destination. So while they never had an official engagement announcement, she's been caught with her sparkler, you know, as the tabloids say, out. So this would suggest that she wants their relationship to head in a very particular direction and that she's invested in that direction. So I like it. I like it. Why wouldn't I like it? Okay. All right. John's internal vibe towards Jen. Oh, oh, external vibe, external vibe. Sorry, sorry. Okay, um, Queen of Cups. So this, you know, he sees her as his queen, right? This could also suggest that he's like a sensitive, kind, intuitive, loving man. But this is a nice buying sign. Like, you're my queen, and you are loving, and nurturing, and a mother, and caring, and, and I feel the same way about you, and blah, blah, blah. These are all very self-explanatory. Okay, Jen's internal vibe towards John. Oh, this is not what I was expecting, but okay, I mean, interesting. I mean, it, it checks out for Jennifer Garner, 10 of wands. So she may just feel very overwhelmed. You know, this is obviously a card of, you know, being overwhelmed, not asking for help, you know, too many pots on the stove, you could lose your way, you could lose your sense of direction you know, ask for help, you need to delegate. And if you think about it, like, sure, I'm sure she has staff, right? Like, I'm sure she has nannies and maids and servants, but it definitely seems like she does a lot on her own, you know, from like picking up the kids. She seems like a very hands-on mom, you know, doing the coffee hour, coffee hour at church. I've seen her pushing that cart. <laughs> I know you guys are like, uh, Lennox, how have you seen her pushing that cart? I've seen paparazzi shots of it because I have no life. Anyway, so it, it does suggest that she's overwhelmed. It, this may not be specific to him. It may just be like generally in her life and it's trickling over to him that she just feels like very overwhelmed by a lot of things. Okay. All right. John's internal vibe towards Jen. Oh, wow. Okay, so... Queen of Pentacles, upright. So this is interesting. So this is so lovely. Um, you know, two queens. Like, he's not a complicated guy. He's a simple guy. Jennifer Garner has said that over and over again. His feelings towards her are very simple. She's my queen, okay? And so he's also, you know, she's financially abundant. I'm sure she walked away from the divorce very well. You know, lots of assets, lots of equity, right? But I think that he also views her as very much uh, in touch with reality, grounded, connected to the earth. You know, she has a great relationship with nature. I feel like she, you know, her Instagram is always like videos of her washing animals or digging in the dirt, you know, in the garden and baking something and just really having a good old time. So, all right. Interesting. What is helping or hurting the situation? Oh, okay. I mean, someone's doing well. So six of wands achievement, success, victory, things going your way, things going in the direction that you want them to go. Um, you know, yay, we did it. It's it's a very, very triumphant card. It's not so much a card of like coupling, um, you know, joint triumph. It's really like one person feels more successful than the other. I mean, kind of. But they may just be saying like, you know, ge achievement, accomplishment, a general like, woo, we did it type of vibe. Um, okay, and then the final card, which would be, where is the energy heading between them? Hmm. Okay. All right, so... Hmm. Not a terrible card. Not a terrible card. Not what I was hoping to see, but we got the Page of Cups in reverse. So let's look at this from various options. Okay, so we know that they're engaged. This could mean a delay in the wedding. Um, 
is, is what this could mean. So pages are the one card of the tarot that can represent situations, typically new situations. So the new situation here would be their marriage, right? So this could be a delay, a obstacle, it not happening at all, um, or it could just be it happening slowly or in secret. So this would suggest maybe hiccups and delays just in their relationship coming up. This could also represent one of their children, right? They, he has two kids. She has, how many kids does she have? Four, three, I don't know. I feel like it's two girls and a little boy. So between them, they've got five kids. Like, you know, kids can, they have their own problems and the problems of your children can become your problems, you know, and you have to deal with them. So that's also what this could mean that can create delays. But basically I'm seeing either delays and obstacles in getting married or, you know, we'll have no idea if they got married. You know, something like that. We'll have no idea that it happens because it's in secret. And then, of course, TMZ will break the story because they're going to have to They're going to have to file a marriage certificate somewhere, right? And I assume they would do so in California. And TMZ has rats all over this state. So eventually we'd find out. I can't imagine that they would get married and be able to keep it a secret for a really long time. So, yeah, that's what I, that's what I would guess. Of course, this could mean the whole thing you know, goes kaput, but I doubt it just because this is about the pages. We got a page of cups in reverse and this represents young people or new situations. And we're reading this as a new situation, the marriage. So guys, that's what I've got for you. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts about all of this. If, if any of you guys can MacGyver his Zodiac sign, man, mad props, mad props, mad props to you. Um, also, oh, the peach story. So, um, on Saturday morning, I was feeling terrible because I, I had a dream about peach and I, he was at work with me and I was choking him. And then he said in English, he was like, mama, stop. I can't relax. And people at work were like, Lennox, like, what are you doing to your dog? You're just being terrible to your dog. And I was like, oh, and then when I woke up, I just felt awful because, but also I felt like a little relieved because that was giving me clarity about like the back pain and just, I was like, you feel guilty. Like you feel guilty about this. Um, and I was like, well, at least I have some clarity. And then I was driving to meet my friends for a cemetery screening of whatever happened to baby Jane in Los Angeles. And there was this little chihuahua just running down the street. And I threw my car into park, you know, haphazardly. And I, I got out, I started following it. And you know, here's a video of it. And it was a boy chihuahua, same size as Peach. Now this was an ugly chihuahua. Like we can all agree, like Mr. Peach was like, I mean, look at this guy. So this was one of those ugly rat faced ch chihuahuas. But you know what, chihuahuas, y'all are my jam. So I started following it, not chasing it. And I was like, hey little guy. Um, so I follow it and it knows exactly where it's going and it stops at this one building, goes into the vestibule and I was like, oh, maybe I can like trap it here and call an animal shelter. And, um, but then I realized I was like, this is its home. Like he chose this building. He lives here. He's like returning itself home. And that's when people are coming through the building. I was like, hey, do you recognize this dog? And I was like, no, no. You know, LA answers like dog. What are you talking about? You know, it's like this dog, the dog I'm pointing to. And so then finally this kid comes out and he's like, oh yeah, I recognize this dog. And he was like, the tenant was looking for it. He's like, my dad's the building manager. And I was like, well, do you want, what unit do they live in? I'll bring the dog up. And so we go and the kid's like, it's 2.15. And I was like, okay. And then he, I walk and he's like, oh no, wait, it's 2.14. And I was like, okay. And then he's like, oh no, wait, it's, and I'm like, He's like, it's 2.13. And so it was 2.13, because that's where the dog was headed. He was like, I have to get back to my owner. And no collar, no leash, no signs of any ownership. I should have said that at the beginning. And so we knock on 2.13 and like, we're listening. And I was like, oh my God, if like drug addicts open this door, I'm gonna have to take this dog. Like, I can't adopt him because it's too soon, but like, I gotta take this dog. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna see on the other side of this door, but like, it better not be bad. So we knock and knock and no one answers. And then the kid calls his dad and they speak in Spanish. And then like, the kid's like, oh no, wait, I hear him. And I was like, you hear him. But I guess, you know, if you work in building management, you can recognize your tenants by their steps. So the, the hallway door opens and this old man, this old Latino man comes through. And the little chihuahua was like, oh, hello. And I'm like, okay, it's an elderly person, that's nice. But I, you know, I did lecture him. Um, I was like, sir, like, can you please get a collar for this dog? I was gonna take him to the shelter, not to, you know, give him away, but to see if he'd been microchipped. And he kind of looked at me like, 
okay, sure, lady. You know, he was like, you're very uppity. He didn't say that, but he kind of looked at me and I was like, really? And like, please get him a collar. And he's like, okay. You know, and uh, like I leave the building, I go to like look for my car and I pass the kid again. And um, I was just like, can you follow up with him in a week and just make sure that dog has a collar? And he just kind of looks at me like, okay, sure, you're pretty uppity. Anyway, so I thought it was a really nice story because it, it almost seemed to me like Peach was like telling me a story. Like, hey, this chihuahua found its way home and I found my way home to you after I passed even though you don't see me. So I thought it was very nice. I thought the timing was very nice. It definitely made me feel a little bit better. Um, so that's what I've got for you guys. Comment below, let me know your thoughts, like and subscribe. As always, we'll do this again.